Hi, after we have discussed about the axiom of probability, let's return to uh, the fundamental concepts of uh, conditional probability with more interesting examples. Right, so let's get a quick review. Um, so if we have events E and F, Okay, so the conditional probability that event E occurs, given that F has occurred, is def denoted by this. Okay, so uh, in this case, we look at the, uh, suppose we have a sample space, and there are two events, E and F. So this, so this is E, and this is F. And you know that, um, for some reason, you, you have figured out that, okay, only the outcomes that occurs lies inside this set f okay now what you want to know what's the probability that you're here okay so you know that f occurs so uh, this part is not possible okay these outcomes are not possible so uh, so you want to know what's the probability that you in here given that this occurs okay all right, so with this notation, we have the definition of uh, the conditional probability that as this. So we have probability that of E given F, this is equal to, okay, so you're looking in terms of that F occur, right? So you divide by F, and this is the probability that they both occurs, okay? So that's the definition, okay? So with this definition, you can do many things, okay? So uh, so now uh, we have, suppose we, we, we believe that the probability that it rains on any day is uh, 0 0.3, okay? And we know that if it rains, John, we bring an umbrella with probability 0 0.7, okay? So what's the probability that it rains and John brings an umbrella? So let's try to be a little bit uh, formal here. So let's define that uh, the events that it rains is an event A, okay? And the event that John brings a number R, okay? John brings a number R. This is event B, okay? Okay, so what is 0 0.3? So that's the probability that event A occurs, okay? But what's what is uh, this uh, zero point seven? Right. So, given that it rains, right? It's here. So this is a, right? So this is the probability that John bring an umbrella, given that it rains. Okay. So this is p b given a. Okay. So we want to compute the probability that it rains and John brings an umbrella rains so this is a and John brings an um, um, umbrella so this is B so you want to compute P of a B we know this we know PA we know P of B given a right so from the conditional probability formula we know that P of B given a is P a B over P B P, oh sorry, P A, right? So, <coughs> so, so from that you know that P A B equals probability that A occurs, right? And then probability that B also occurs given A, right? So this is uh, zero point three times zero point seven. That's zero point. Two, two, one. Okay. All right. <coughs> my my next question for this is that uh, is it possible to compute to find P B with this with the the given information? So let me pause for a few seconds to let you think. So let's draw this uh, Venn diagram. So this is the sample space. We have what do you know? So this is A and B. 
Okay. So the information that are given is that uh, this this circle is a zero point three, right? And what is seven point seven? It says that this part over this part, right? Over this part is point seven. Now, if you look carefully, we we know nothing about this. So with the given information, we have no idea if what's the probability of B, right? But we, in some sense, we know that <coughs> probability of B is, is at least 0 0.21. Why? Yeah, from the previous <coughs> example, we know that, um, so hint. So let I, I will let you think. I'm not gonna tell you, but the hint is that uh, a b is a subset of b. Okay. All right. So what we did previously uh, when we say that um, the probability that it rains will be uh, 0 0.3. This is the meaning of uh, is there a random experiment? that we perform clearly no right so it's this this usage of probability as a measure of beliefs okay is is another interpretation of probability so a probability assigned to a given event is not related to any random experiment okay but it represents a degree of beliefs okay like I believe that this thing would occur and and this is the meaning when we in the in an in introduction when we talk about the probability that Germany will win a World Cup or the probability that you hit uh something. Um so this is the one mean another meaning of probabilities. Okay, say suppose you say uh you see a wet street and you believe that there's a uh seventy five percent chance that it rained previously. So that's that's a uh, there's no random experiment at all, right? It's either rain or not rain, right? But in your beliefs, you, you're you not sure about the fact, okay? So that's the the, the fact the, the, the fact that this this is not one, okay? Means that uh, you, you have uncertainties. And um, if you believe that the measure of beliefs should follow the axiom of probabilities, this is what's nice about axiomatic approach to probability is that uh, you, if you believe that measure of beliefs follows the axiom of probabilities, everything that we develop after that, like after these axioms, will be useful. Will be we can use that the same analysis uh, to analyze uh, this degree of beliefs. Okay, the same way we analyze random experiment. Okay. Um, this will be this is really useful use of probability theory in in AI machine learning and data mining. Okay, okay. So let's look at another example. So we know that uh, the given inf uh, information from the previous example is not enough to figure out the the probability of B, right? So again, this is let's bring this A, and John brings an umbrella, and this is event B. Now. Uh, so we give to you a little bit more. If it does not rain, John, you bring a number uh, with probability 0 0.2. Okay. So now, can you find out what's the probability that John will bring a number? Uh? So what's the probability? Of, oh, sorry. What's the probability of E and B equals? So I'll wait for a few seconds so, so that you can think about it. All right. So if you need more time, just pause. All right. Um, okay. So let's draw. It's nice to think about these things in terms of Venn diagram. Okay. So you want to figure out. So this is A. This is B. So you want to figure out this part. Okay. You know that. Uh, what's what is zero point seven? This is uh, probability that B given A, right? But what's this zero point two? So this is probability of B given a complement. Okay. 
Right. So what is b? Okay. So because b is equal to, you can think of the event b as this part union with this part. Okay. And they are disjoint. The nice thing about it. Okay. So it's a b union a complement b. Okay. And they are disjoint. So we know that from from the axiom of probability, we know that this probability b equals probability b a plus probability of b a complement. Okay, and b a what is probability of b a? So it's probability of a times probability of b given a. And what's this? Okay, you know the answer, right? So it's a uh, probability of a complement, probability of b given a complement. Okay, and you can plug in everything. So this, how how you gonna get this? So from the first axiom and stuff that we uh, shown previously, right? We know that this is uh, zero point seven. Okay. So you can compute this by yourself. All right. So that's it for this clips. Uh, I'll see you in the next clips about uh, independence.